Tessator is our brand new commentator for Monday Night Raw, and Wade Barrett even introduced him at the start of the show. Now, everyone on social media has given their review, so I shall give mine. Thought it did a very good job. Now, we do have to give him some leeway because it was his first go, and yes, he didn't know the name of some moves, but I don't even pretend that you know the name of all the moves because you don't. And on occasion, he needs to put some more emotion in there. But honestly, if you rang me up right now and said, Simon, come commentate on Raw. I, well, I didn't have the voice to match what old Joey did. So I actually think this could turn into something very, very fun. But we just have to be patient. And it did give WWE a different feel. And as we all know, we all like different feels. Also, hello, my friends. I'm welcome to Ups and Downs, the only review show that you do need. Hence why I just reviewed a human being. I'm talking about flying all over the place. If you are in Canada this weekend in Ontario, I shall be fighting for Ethan Page Alpha One promotion. So come on down and say hello. Or it's streaming live on their YouTube channel so you can laugh at me and go, ha, ha, Simon sucks at the wrestling. It's true, but I do it anyway. Let's up those doubts. We then got this big video, which is essentially somebody shouting at you, you should have watched Bash at Berlin, when out came Rhea Ripley. Big pop. She welcomed us to Monday Night Mammy, which is not the name of the show, but she was happy either way, because at the pay-per-view premium live event, she and Damian Priest had defeated Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan. Rhea promised she wasn't done because she has to go win her championship back when she got interrupted by the condom. That mother flopper went and got a black eye. Now, he had a moustache as well when he got booed out of the place, but he was able to squeak out, Liv Morgan isn't here because of everything you did to her in Berlin. I was like, yeah, right. And I shaved my head because I think it looked good. Mysterio then blamed jet lag on the fact they didn't get any sleep on their loss because he insinuated they were having a lot of sex. Don't blame me. That's the point he was getting at. And all that really matters is where this story ends because Dominic Mysterio will become the Intercontinental Champion. And no matter what Rhea does, Morgan will be keeping that belt too. Ripley then told Dom he was stupid. <laughs> this kind of made me laugh. I mean, why not? When, of course, Liv Morgan did attack the Nightmare. But Rhea Ripley ain't no stupid baby face. Just smacked her right in the face. And the only reason she wasn't able to keep this going is because, of course, Dominic got in the way. When Rhea got trapped in the ropes, and I was like, what is it with these Terra twins getting trapped in the damn things? Or actually, I think this one was planned. Because instantly, my gosh, Liv attacked the leg like it owed her money. Listen. I went and talked to a scientist. A leg can't owe you money. Damien Priest was finally here. I was like, where have you been, bro? You're well delayed. And if I was going to guess, which I shall do right now, I would assume we get to Bad Blood and we do the singles matches. And yeah, I'll give it to you. The new Judgment Day are getting their butts kicked a lot. I do believe this is going to tie in. Either way, though, to me, they all feel like stars. So I don't actually care what you do. Because the good guys get cheered. The bad guy gets booed. That's all I want from my sports entertainment. I thought this was nice, quick, and fun. Uh, Chad Gable then smacked Julius Creed right in the face because American Maid was about to have a match, and this is how he had decided to G him up. I was like, Chad, that is certainly a choice. Rhea also screamed at some medical trainers. I was like, man, that's not going to help you with your injury. You have to let them help you. When Damien Priest walked in, said the same thing. He was like, listen, you know, they're like from the hospital and stuff. They need to massage the wound. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. We then cut to the six-man tag, which was Alpha Academy versus American Maid. And you'd be shocked to hear it was pretty, pretty fun. Now, Otis used Tazawa as a weapon right away. If I was Tazawa, I'd be so upset. Like, man, all those years of training and I got all these cool moves. And now I'm being used as a projectile. I'm not a happy panda. Maxine Dupree also kicked all the ass, which I always enjoy seeing because you do see her improve every single week. When she did a big old time off the top rope onto everybody, when she got murked by the most powerful force in all of sports entertainment, the commercial breakers, that's right. We cut to the adverts when we came back, America Made were just in control. I was actually mad about this. I was like, don't you dare do that to Maxine. She just put up with an ass. It meant that Tazar was getting his ass whooped for a long old time. And all of a sudden, I think he could feel it. He could feel that somebody's arm around the place was getting all warm and sweat was dripping from their palms. So as soon as he had DDT, he got the hot tag to woe us. He was basically just a human tag as he ran everybody over. This is when Tazawa must have taken a med pack because he was back in the ring. He was busting out German suplexes. 
And as somebody made a great point, I should have done this to let myself down, at the Berlin pay-per-view premium live event, we should have called them American suplexes, I'm an idiot. Certainly Tazawa then tried to dive and Julius caught him and totally murked this guy when Brutus and Otis were taking the other person out, and I don't mean to dinner, when it was time for Maxine to go at it again. And she grabbed Ivy now and she gave her a Northern Light suplex. Now, of course, this wasn't as good as Alicia Fox's, but that's a different conversation for a different day. When Chad Gable, of all people, jumped on the apron, he caused the distraction, it totally worked. Maxine, she's like a rookie, man. She's never going to be able to handle this when Ivy now snuck up behind her, she applied the dragon sleeper, American made one. Damn it. Chad wasn't done though because he thinks the Wyatt Six are a bunch of freaks when he challenged them to an eight-man tag in seven days because he just kept going on and on here. Eventually the lights went out and here came Uncle Howdy. I think he said something along the lines of his sanity crumpled a year ago but he can still hear the silence in his brain. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's what my teachers used to say to me when I was in school. This is when the rest of his team appeared around him just to have the coolest shot you'll ever see in your life. And I'm just enjoying this feud for what it is. I mean, I have no idea who wins the eight-man tag because Chad Gable needs to start getting some victories. But in terms of what it was meant to be, I'm giving it an up. I don't want to, like, downplay it or anything. But it just works on TV. Long may it continue. When Shayna Baszler was indeed taking on Zelina Vega... I mean, Shayna did break her arm. Now, there was this super nice moment, too, when Vega saw a sign in the crowd, and it turned out to be her dad who passed away versus 9-11. So I thought that was lovely, jubbly. I suppose it fired her up, too. She smashed Shayna Baszler with a 619. It's like a low one. Because Sonya Deville was being an idiot on the outside, though. Vega then just jumped onto her, because she had learned this in the Street Fighter tournament. <laughs> I kid you not. She then got back in the ring, and Shayna just went, Hup! <laughs> and she booted her, kind of in the shoulder-head area, and she pinned her. One, two, three. I had to rewind it to make sure I missed anything. Nope, she lost via a kicking. The Pure Fusion Collective then made it very clear they are not a product on the Home Shopping Network. Even though Lyra Valkyria tried to make the save, she absolutely failed. Like, if you get a grade it, you give it an F. Bill then threatened everybody in the back and said they would face anyone, and she did scream through the camera. And then later on, Lyra and Zelina were talking, and Valkyria was like, well, we're going to have to go find somebody else in order to have a six-person tag. I was like, aren't you meant to be friends with Caden Carter and Katana Chance? What happened to that? So it really does still feel like we're doing stuff just to do some stuff. And listen, I do not mind Shayna Baszler being presented like this at all, because she is a badass, but I still don't know what the story is here. And we did have some promo time, and I think we could have added some layers to it. And I know I say the same thing every week, and I'm really boring, hi, mum and dad. But if the same thing is gonna happen each and every week on TV, what am I meant to do? I think the reason it irks me so much is because everybody in this is so damn good, and we do have a pure fusion collective, which is not a Pokemon game, but yeah, when you compare it to other narratives, happening in WWE, this deserves more TLC. And I'm going to stand by it until the day I die. He'll come to my grave and under the mound of dirt, you'll hear me go, what do we do this? Blah, blah, blah. And you'll, you know, freak out because you shouldn't have buried an alive guy. Don't know how he got here, but it's getting it down. We then saw Rhea Ripley telling Damien Priest she'll be fine while wearing a knee brace and holding a crutch. And I was like, yes, Rhea, I totally believe you. Damien had also tried to get a match with Finn Balor, but Adam Pearce had told him, oh, Balor only wants a tag team match. So once again, I was like, Adam, you are the boss. If you want Finn Balor to be in a singles match, you just say, let it be. Of course, it was just a big tease, because even though Damien doesn't have any friends, Rhea was like, I know who you can get. When the crowd yeeted, and they smiled at each other. This was a real thing that happened on wrestling television. And if you'd never watched WWE before, quite rightfully, you would have been very confused. Yeet. We then saw CM Punk walking to the ring, mostly because he was headed to the ring. And he grabbed a microphone, and man, he was just happy to be here. He was also excited to see his wife and dog after a long old trip. And let's not forget what did happen at the weekend. He finally got his personal life sorted because he beat Drew McIntyre. Look at this. I've got the bracelet back. I think he kissed it again. Let's forget where that's been. It also means now he can start focusing on the business side of professional wrestling, which means gold. Uh, yeah, he was talking about the world heavyweight title. So Gunther, you better get ready for one CM Punk. He made sure to put Drew and Gunther over massively, though, and he even said, oh my gosh, the ring general beat Randy Orton, which is quite the name for your CV. But we are now coming after your trinket. And he said we because he met the fans. Well, I'm a fan, so I'm going to write all my friends. Dear Brian, I'm about to be the WWE champ. I knew he was going to make a terrible mistake after this, because all wrestlers do. And he went and posed on Alan the announce table. 
And this is when his world came crumbling down into dust. Because as soon as he was up there, Drew McIntyre appeared in a hoodie. <laughs> this is exactly what Joe Tessator said. At that moment, I was like, Joe, you can never do wrong by me. If you start calling stuff literally, you and I are going to be best friends. He really kicked Punk's ass too, to the point Wade Barrett tried to calm him down. But he totally ignored him here. And even back on commentary, Wade was like, I've never seen him like that before. And I've known him nigh on 20 years. I mean, he literally claymored Punk out of his shoes when he got him in the ring. And we beat him up there and he claymored it again. And he beat him up some more. And while the rubbish security were trying to stop this, they did nothing to the point Drew got the bracelet, he destroyed it, which got a massive reaction from the fans, so you can't say this didn't work, when he took the remnants and he stuck it in CM Punk's mouth. And I was like, we are not in Kansas anymore, Toto. It also cements the fact that Drew McIntyre is absolutely 2024's hater of the year. And this got so bad, Punk had to be stretched out of there. But he didn't get to the local medical facility wagon, because Drew appeared again and he beat CM Punk up on the stretcher. The best part about this is Adam Pearce saw him and literally went, ah! It was the greatest moment of my life. Pearce even then started shouting at Punk, talk to me, and CM didn't reply. So I don't know what else to do with this information. I guess he's dead. Now, I did find it odd that some people thought that we were just going to be done with these two at Bash at Berlin, given there's a pay-per-view premium live event coming up called Bad Blood, and they're probably going to have a Hell in a Cell or a cage match, and we should do this. Imagine Drew McIntyre just walked out and gone, oh, man, I don't want to fight Slam Punk anymore. We would all have been livid. So what we have done is we have definitely drawn a line on the bracelet thing, but if you wanted some violence between these two, it is absolutely coming, and I'm still invested. I'm still massively enjoying it. And I'm giving it enough. When we got into our intercontinental title tournament, and it was Ilya Dragunov taking on Dragon Lee, kind of <laughs> taking on Dominic Mysterio, but essentially, boop, we got rid of him so we could see Dragon and Ilya go at it. It did kind of feel like Triple H going, oh man, internet wrestling community, you want something? I'll give it to you. Now, the reason Dom wasn't there too is almost instantly Carlito came out to try and get involved here when Damian Priest must have gone, right, push play on my entrance theme, I'm going out there too. And not only did he run off Mr. Caribbean Apple Cool, but Dominic was so scared, he chased him through the fans. So even though Dommy Boy had given it the big and earlier on going, oh, I'm going to be the IC champion, he was so scared of Damien, he gave up his dreams. Otherwise, you just got to find five minutes to watch Dragonov and Dragon Lee going at it because it's so damn good. The only real issue being me being like, man, we haven't seen Lee properly on TV for ages. I don't think he's going to win, and he didn't. Also, he's a dragon, so you know, you gotta be careful of his fire. So from nowhere, Elia was able to hit the Torpedo Moscow and he got the one, two, three. And yes, Joe Tessator called it a shoulder tackle once again. Not everybody knows all the moves and somebody would have said, oh, that was the Tornado Moscow. And Joe will go, oh, thanks very much. Hopefully without the screams, because that will make for a very difficult conversation. But it also means in terms of our big finals, it is Pete Dunne versus Jay Uso versus Elia Dragunov and one more. And if you ain't excited for that, well, you're allowed not to be. You pick and choose. But this bald idiot, I can't wait. Um, then got it confirmed that Bronson Reed wasn't going to be able to compete in his match because he's got COVID. And I was like, oh man, that ruins me. Deep down in my tum-tum, he had such good momentum. And Bronson is well within his rights to be super pissed off because his replacement is... Da -da -da. Braun Strowman. Now we saw Adam Pearce and Strowman talking here. Man, what a massive troll this was. Because Adam at first was like, what are you doing here, Braun? Braun was like, oh man, I know I got killed last week when I got exploded into a car, but I am going to be okay, because look, and he had his ribs taped. That's like, what good do you think that is going to do? And later on, we would find the answer to be nice. It also made me laugh because Strowman told Adam, well, medical said I can do whatever I want. I was like, no medical has ever gone to a patient and said, meh. Do whatever you want. So somebody is lying here and we need to find out who's responsible. And speaking about issues like that, before we got to this match, Kyrie Sane almost died. Good grief. For it was indeed Isla Dawn and Alba Fire taking on damage control. And when Kyrie went to do a dive, Dawn essentially pushed Bianca Belair in the way because her and Jay Gargi were watching from ringside. And man, Kyrie must have overshot this because she flew into Alan the announce table. She was bleeding everywhere. You could see on social media, she needed stitches basically in her eye. 
She is one tough son of a dick. That could have been way worse too. But Kyrie saying that EO Sky should be livid. Because for the first five minutes, man, they were all over the unholy union collective, whatever they're called, when they got murked by the most powerful force in all of sports entertainment, the commercial break. So once again, production stop. Stop running adverts. You are literally costing people their careers. You also had some skirmishing with Jade and Bianca, because of course they were like, how dare you jump into me? And given that Kyrie Sane was essentially passed out on the floor, EO Sky tried to fight here when Isla and Alba hit that face buster plant gory bomb thingamajig and they beat damage control for the 1-2-3. I'll be completely honest with you, I was surprised. I didn't see that coming. Especially because this was a number one contendership match and now we have to redo Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair versus these two. But I shall tell you this. The reason I was such in favor is because I was like, oh my gosh, the women's tag team championships are still being focused on doing the dance of joy. No, I mean, it's a little bit drab because I would have preferred some brand new contenders after somebody pressed start on controller two, but beggars can't be choosers. This is the most structured the whole division has been in ages. I am giving it an up. Keep it going. When we got to question time, what the fluff is happening with the New Day? As Kofi Kingston was with Adam Pearce and he rightfully pointed out, oh, hello, my good man. Do you know the Judgment Day haven't defended their tag team titles since 1412? He's right. Just as he was going to pitch something, though, Gunther walked by and Kofi looked at Gunther and Gunther looked at Kofi and I was like, well, if that's not a tease of a match, take your hand out of my pants, because this ain't right. My big question, though, is where the flub is Odyssey Jones? Because he's been following the news on social media. He vanished from the WWE roster page, and now he's not on Raw. And from the past two weeks, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods have barely said his name. So I am jumping to conclusions here, but either way, it has just made whatever this story was so wishy-washy. And I understand WWE now retroactively has to try and fit that. But as a stupid fan watching on television. Of course it has to get it down. I was on tenterhooks going, oh my gosh, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods are about to break up and now Kofi <laughs> wants to be the world champion. That's like me writing a novel and said then Steve went to the bathroom and ended up becoming the prime minister. That don't make no sense. Down. And look, no, it's nobody's fault here and we have to wait and see what's going on, but it's just how I felt when Damien Priest found Rhea Ripley and said our potential partner has said yeet and everyone acted like this was perfectly normal conversation. There's also the trigger for the champ champ to come to the ring because Gunther was here. He was like, that's right. Not only did I beat Randy Orton, but I packed out Germany. And if you want to talk about that record live, Gate, look at this guy. It's all because of me. It also means he continues to cement his legacy as he does go through all of his opponents. When of all the people, Sami Zayn interrupted. I was like, ooh, lally. Now the fans popped like a balloon as Sami Zayn did start talking about the Intercontinental title. Because look at the Macho Man, look at Shawn Michaels, look at The Rock, look at Steve Austin, look at my personal favourite, Bret the Hitman Hart. They all won the workhorse belt and then they used that to become the WWE Champion. So after some thinking, I would like to do that too. That's why I'm looking at you, Gunther. So talk about shooting your shot. <laughs> that was always good. had the best retort. It was like, man, that was a great list of names. And you're right. All of them did move up after they won the IC belt. But when it comes to you, Sam, you've moved down. Also, if I was going to write that list, your name wouldn't be on it. <laughs> but Sammy's actually like, man, you're right. I'm sorry, friend. I'll talk to you soon. So good that he's just like a James Bond villain. He was even going to leave here. His music started to play. When Sam was like, no, 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 man, we ain't doing this. Because let's face it, you've never backed down from a fight. And actually, ever since you've been on main roster, there's only been one guy who has beaten you. That was at WrestleMania 40, and that was me, so dare I said, I think you're scared. Now, I did side with Gunther at first, because Sammy was trying to pull a geese title shot here. But actually, everything he said did make perfect sense. It was not 2 plus 2 equals potato. And as Gunther told him, fine, if you do want to have a shot at me, well, maybe you should go out another way and try and prove it. So I guess that's what he's going to do by winning a lot of matches. So I really enjoyed this because on the one hand, Gunther was right to laugh it off. But on the other, Sammy was right to bring up WrestleMania. Because yes, he did pick Gunther. So, you know, if he was going to have a rematch, he does have just cause. But now Gunther just happens to be the World Heavyweight Champion. So look, it's a little bit different. But actually, it ties together like glue. If nothing else, if we go back to 2017 and 2018 here on Ups and Downs, Sammy Zayn was being dragged through the mud so much, I invented a counter. Now he can be one of the guys that comes out and challenges for the world championship. I will never get mad at it, even if it was baloney. So I'm telling you the truth right now. It's getting it up. I'm excited. Jackie Redman was then interviewing Jay Uso, who was talking about his tag team match and the fact he's going after the IC title. When Bron Breaker walked in and he did it again, like Britney Spears, your family has never beaten someone from my family. 
who's talking about the bloodline, he's talking about the Steiners. What the flub are we hinting at? I mean, we're probably just being nerds and Bron was like, you have one last chance to walk away and go hang out with Dominic Mysterio's sloppy seconds when Uso just won this exchange and he called him a rookie. Now, that don't sound great when I say it, but the look on Breaker's face, he was not pleased. It also just means that Bron Breaker has now given Jay Uso another reason why he wants to win the IC title. And this was so good in its simplicity. It was just like something magic about it. And even though Jay Uso isn't a new guy, it kind of felt like two new guys doing a thing for the Intercontinental title. I'm giving it a round of applause. You also got great jeopardy here because I want Jay to win the IC title, but I don't think Bron should lose. So what the flub do we do? Thankfully, I don't have to worry about that. When I got sad, can't help it. But it was Braun Strowman versus Ludwig Kaiver versus Sheamus in the IC title tournament. Braun Strowman won, which probably means the Bronson Reed was going to win. He got taken out with stupid health issues. I mean, obviously, I want him to be protected. Nothing is more important than health and happiness, but I'm still going to give it a down. Mostly because that's just really, really unfair. This match, though, was just super fun. And even though Braun was able to level Sheamus and Ludwig to begin with, when he did his big choo-choo thing, Kai's like, all right, well, I'll just get out of the way. Braun Strowman went crashing through Barry Barricade. Now, this is when Ludwig was going to go his big run. But Braun had a plan of his own, which was quite good. I'm going to pick up this leather chair and throw it right at your face. It annoyed Strowman so much, he went and choked slam Sheamus as well. So Braun was winning here. <laughs> I think the Irishman was so annoyed. He just hit Braun Strowman right in the ribs. And surprise, surprise, the magic tape did nothing. It's almost like a real medical personnel could have told you that. He was also able to get the 10 beats as Ludwig was back and he tried to win with the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment surprise roll up. He was only able to get a one, two, ooh. He was hitting Inseguri to Sheamus, but he must have accidentally turned on his go button too because Sheamus came back with a bro kick. And just as he was about to win, Pete Dunne pulled him out of the ring and he hit him with a shillelagh. Because of course he did. Sheamus is Irish. He's not allowed to hit him with any other sort of weapon. Ludwig was still all confused from the broad kick as well when Braun Strowman had taken his Phoenix down. So he hit the power slam. And yeah, like I told you, he got the one, two, three. So mostly this was totally fine because I think the Jey Uso should be the guy to win the whole tournament. And also it was just big men slapping man meat. And you'd really have to do something bad for me not to be entertained by that. We then saw Jay and Damian Priest having a quick chat too, because Jay was like, I understand your pain, my friend. I mean, you've even lost your family, and who understands that better than me? He also mentioned that he can't say no to Rhea Ripley, so it was a proper ha 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 moment. When Jackie Redmond was talking to Pete, I have to be on every single show done, because now that he has laid waste to Sheamus, he's going to go to NXT and do the same thing to Trick Williams, when Jackie just decided, well, I'm in a trolling mood, and she called him Butch. Now, Peter turned around like, you better not call me, Butch. But what the hell were you thinking, Jackie? You are walking a tightrope. When surely we must have teased brand new tag team champions, because Jay Uso and Damian Priest defeated the Judgment Day. Now, poor Uso was doing great, but after he hit a dive, he got smashed by the most powerful force in all of sports entertainment, the commercial break. I can't talk about it anymore. I'm totally worn out by the adverts, but I tell you they're a curse. It was sort of the same as our earlier matches too, because Finn Balor and JD McDonough then whipped Jay Uso's ass, but they forgot they had the power of yeet, or he has the power of yeet, so he yeeted up. And he got a yeet tag to Damien Priest who ran wild. It allowed him to kill JD, but Balor was able to get in there with his sling blade, but that was the equivalent of kissing a wall. It did not. After Priest had lined his head off and was going for the choke slam, Finn reversed it into the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment, the surprise roll up, but he too could only get a one, two, ooh. McDonough then tried to cheat, but he totally failed, which made me laugh. So Jay Uso super kicked everything and hit him with the spear. But of course, when he tried for the splash, Liv Morgan teleported down from the Starship Enterprise and she hit him so his balls fell into the rope. Finn Balor went crazy here though because he got the tag and went slink play dropkick and coupe de gras and this happened so quickly I was like damn it he's gonna win. He probably would have done two if it wasn't for these meddling kids because even though he tagged JD who hit the moonsault once again it got broken up at the one two. Morgan then jumped on the ring apron which is when Rhea Ripley either won was just hanging behind the curtain and finally decided oh fine I'll go sort it out or two was limping so she couldn't get there in time did walk to the ring and as ever Liv was terrified about this she should have been two. Ripley took the crutch. Whammo. Smacked her one. Very timely too, JD McDonough then stumbled into the screen. So Jay Uso gave him the spear. So Damian Priest gave him the razor's edge. As Uso finally hit the Uso splash. So yes, they beat the tag team champions. They should call their shot soon. When Rhea Ripley, Damian Priest and Jay Uso basically danced to end Monday Night Raw. 
and somewhere Rikishi was probably really, really mad. The most important part, though, is that we sent the fans home happy, which is so damn important when it comes to wrestling, so it makes you go, oh, we should go back. I had a good time. Actually, I had a good time too. So, this main event is getting an up, and Raw as a whole, it gets an up too. Like, if we could just get the pieces in place for the women's division, well, there'd be barely any cracks at all. Now, of course, please do let me know what you thought about last night's episode of Raw. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Click the video on the screen, which is ups and downs from Bashing Berlin, to get all my thoughts about sports entertainment otherwise. Have a great week, my friends. I'll see you soon.